Welcome back, everyone. Well, as you know, all week long we've been doing a lot of interviews and a lot of stories related to veterans. And joining me today is our congresswoman, congresswoman. Boy, I love saying that. <laughs> congresswoman Elise Stefanik. So welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be home. Yeah, I was just going to say welcome home. Uh, Elise, you've been uh, involved with a lot of veterans' issues. And there's a bill that you've introduced into Congress. Tell us about the bill. So the bill I introduced uh, in honor of Veterans Day this week is the Military Caregivers Act. Mm -hmm. uh, in the district I represent, I actually have the highest number of veterans out of any other congressional district in New York State. Uh -huh. And uh, after 9-11, the VA started a program to provide support and funding for our caregivers. And one of the challenges is there are more caregivers than the VA anticipated. So they anticipated that about 4,000 individuals would apply for this program. Mm -hmm. And the v VA has seen over 15,000, so there's a significant backlog. We need to make sure that our military caregivers, our parents, our spouses, sometimes our adult children who are responsible for caring for our wounded vets have the support they need um, so this would allow the VA to address the backlog by hiring a third party to make sure the approval process actually functions so it's a way about bringing common sense to the VA and making sure that our caregivers are given the support because it's a very stressful it's in many cases a full-time job and they deserve that as well as our veterans well you know uh, you bring up a very important point I saw an interview recently and we conducted an interview with a wounded warrior and it was a caregiver, and I kept noticing the expressions on his wife's face and whatever. You know, it's one thing when a soldier, man or woman, comes back from the field and they're wounded, but they're caregivers. They're the ones that see them in pain every day. They're the ones that have to attend to them and whatever. And the stress on them is much more significant, I think, than, than people realize. Absolutely. The challenges of our military families cannot be underestimated. Mm -hmm. um, my congressional office deals with veterans' claims, and often it's the caregiver who's helping the veteran go right. through the bureaucratic challenges and working full-time to make sure that they get the care they need because they're their loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, they want to see them lead a fulfilling life after they're returning, um, regardless of the, the health challenges they have. So we need to make sure that the caregivers have the support system as well as our veterans. Got it. Now, there is also uh, another bill that's pending. Uh, a lot of support in Congress uh, related to the 9-11 rescue workers in New York. Correct. Uh, Tell me a bit about that. So the 9-11 workers have suffered from health challenges, and the entire New York congressional delegation, both on the Senate side, so Senator Gillibrand and Senator Schumer, right. and all of the representatives have signed on to make sure that our 9-11 workers are provided the support they need um, because they were our first responders during 9-11. Mm -hmm. So this has bipartisan support. The New York delegation is trying to get this done uh, in this Congress. It's passed in a previous Congress, uh, but as we know, oftentimes it's making sure that it gets out of the House, gets out yes, of the Senate, and sure. gets to the President's desk to be signed into law. So this is incredibly important for all of New Yorkers. Um, I was a senior in high school when 9-11 happened, mm. and uh, I just remember that moment just like every American uh, remembers where they were right. and everyone knows a family that was affected whether it was uh, a 9-11 worker or it was a, a sibling that worked in the World Trade Center. So as New Yorkers we need to come together to get this done. Uh, boy, I really commend you for that because I know there was a move afoot um, to actually have funding for that stripped or at least reduced and that to me doesn't make any sense at all. You know, it's not that these people all of a sudden are less sick, you know what I mean? No, that's unacceptable. Yes, that's we right. need to pass this, and it has over 200 co-sponsors in the House, so it's much broader than just the New York delegation. But this is an example of a bipartisan bill that makes sure that our first responders, our health workers, have the support that they need. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly when a, a nation uh, goes through 9-11, we need to honor those and provide the support um, for all of those that put their lives on the line and, and make, made sure that our families were able to recover from that Boy, tragedy. I know. I know. Now, you, uh, your time is always well spent, let's leave it at that, when you come <laughs> home. Uh, you've got quite a few activities, uh, but one stood out to me. You've got an event you're going to. 
Yes. So um, one of the, the jobs of a member of Congress is making sure that our veterans uh, are given the awards and the honors that, they're, that they deserve. And I am presenting a bronze star to mm. the family members of a World War II veteran, Donald Gilchrist, in Ballston Spa later today. And I know it will be a, a very moving moment for the family, and it's honoring his memory, and it's, a, it's an award he deserved. Mm -hmm. Now you're headed up to Plattsburgh? And then I'm headed up to Plattsburgh. <laughs> Tomorrow I have uh, a veterans luncheon as mm -hmm. well as a veterans dinner in Willsboro uh, for Essex County. And I also have a Rotary Club lunch. So I'm, I must be hopping around tomorrow a <laughs> lot. <laughs> you're hopping around. Uh, Anthony, you're going to keep her uh, yeah. pointed in the right direction, <laughs> right? The, uh, you know, I've got to ask you this. You know, I follow politics my whole life. Uh, John Boehner, Speaker of the House, recently resigned replaced by someone who is highly regarded and highly respected across the aisle, Paul Ryan, former VP candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like? Well, first of all, it's a very unique experience to be a freshman member of Congress and to have a speaker's election in the middle of your first year. So um, it's very rare, and uh, I was proud to vote in support of Congressman Paul Ryan as to become speaker. I think he's uniquely qualified to bridge the divide, not only in the Republican conference, but in Congress as a whole. Um, for me personally, Paul is a friend. Right. I uh, helped him with debate preparations in 2012 for the vice presidential debate. And I think, you know, as a young person in Congress, it's also important that the public remember Paul was elected when he was in his late 20s, and he is the youngest speaker we've had in over 100 years. Mm -hmm. And it shows that if you're a young person who digs into policy, has energy, tries to get things done on a bipartisan basis, you can really change the direction of this country. And I think uh, Congressman Ryan has shown bipartisan leadership on some of the budget deals in the past. Uh, speaker Ryan also voted for the recent budget agreement, mm -hmm which uh, will provide certainty over the next two years. So I'm excited for what's ahead. We have challenges as a country, but I think he's uniquely qualified to bring the energy and the bipartisan leadership that we need. Well, you know what, um, and if you did mention it, I was going to mention it, that you were involved with him. You know him personally mm -hmm. for helping him with his debate preparation for the last presidential election. Um, he, I, I also really like the way he set it up. He, that's, he was... Uh, had a Ways and Means Committee. Correct. That's really his love. And to take on what a lot of people would say is a very prestigious position, but also a very thankless job, mm -hmm. the way he set it up saying, I really need to have the support of both, of at least my own party, to be able to bring, to cross the aisle so that I know that I've got the authority and the weight behind me. Absolutely, you know? and it was very unique because usually when someone is considering running for speaker, they're actively contacting other members, That's they're right. con they're campaigning essentially for the job. Mm -hmm. And what Congressman Ryan did was he took a step back, he really assessed what he thought um, Congress needed, the type of leadership they need at this specific moment in time, and mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to make sure that he was able to bridge some of the divides that have occurred within Republicans in Congress, and overwhelmingly he won the, the, the vote on the floor. 238 Republicans voted in support of him. He only right. needed 218. Right. Um, and I think that's a testament to Paul. He is a leader. Um, he cares deeply about policy. And this was a selfless act for him in that he, is, he was chairman of Ways and Means, which, of course, is responsible for tax reform, which is one of his top priorities and I think is a priority for the country. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we will get that done in the next few years, although it may have to wait till the next administration. Um, but I think, you know, the way he uh, set it up, I think, was very smart, and it allowed unity instead of the divisiveness, which mm -hmm. has been which has been a struggle this year. Uh, you know, last time you were here, I asked you if you were pinching yourself. You know, so <laughs> have you figured out which hallways work? <laughs> I get lost less, but there are all these tunnels in the basement. Right. So sometimes, <laughs> last uh, week, I, I found it myself, I was in a, a tunnel that I hadn't been in before. So that <laughs> happens. Some of the older members tell me it still happens to them when they've been there five, ten years. Maybe for a different reason, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, but I, I still pinch myself. It's been an extraordinary experience. And what is most fulfilling is hearing from the constituents how the work that we're doing, whether it's the casework for our veterans, introducing mm -hmm. legislation like the Military Caregivers Act, Caregivers Act, it makes an impact on their lives for the better. So, you know, that's my job, and I'm, uh, you know, 
very blessed to have the support of so many constituents in this district, and I'm going to continue working hard. Look, we're blessed to have you. I'm telling you, the energy you bring and the passion you bring. I'm an older guy. I've been around the block a few times, and I love politics. It's so refreshing to have someone like you represent us. So thank you, and thanks for taking the time to stop in to hometown. Love it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good. I'll see you again. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.